All right, good afternoon. Uh, chapter 20, working in the construction phase. Can be a daunting task. Can be a daunting task. Lots of false bravado. Lots of false bravado up and down the, uh, the corporate ladder. Now, modeling for construction. Now that we have reviewed some basic functionality, a design team might use the uh, that a design team might use during the construction phase. Let's take a look at how a builder, contractor, subcontractor, or con a construction manager might use Revit in the uh, industry today or tomorrow. Modeling for construction is uh, is actually pretty fun. You'll have a lot of fun. Revit is often referred to as a design application. However, contractors are using the software more frequently as both a model, authoring, and project analysis tool. Although builders use BIM tools to obtain different uh, results than design professionals do, many of these processes and functions are the same. They are merely applied in particular ways according to the needs of various users. Functionality introduced back in Revit Architecture 2012 supports a more interactive and flexible approach to construction modeling. The first addition was the ability to create parts, which are individual subsets of more complex layered elements such as walls and doors. I'm sorry, walls and floors. The other addition allowed you to generate assemblies, which are segregated subsets of the project model with their own associated views, annotations, and sheets. These tools are used to take large elements and break them down into small components as they'd be used on the job site. As an example, in an architectural model, a cast-in-place concrete floor would be a single element for the entire floor plate. In practice, the contractor would never pour the floor that way. The concrete would be poured in a series of pads or lifts, and the contractor would have to divide the slab into these uh, into a series of pours for his or her schedule. The potential to minimize data loss between the design and construction stakeholders of a project can start to change how we approach collaboration and delivery of our buildings. Creating parts. Parts are designed to aid the user in subdividing larger model elements into smaller components for construction planning. Each part maintains a persistent relationship with the elements for, uh, I'm sorry, each part maintains a persistent relationship with the elements from which it was derived. And it can be subdivided into smaller parts if necessary. Parts can be generated from walls, floors, ceilings, and roofs as long as they're cons uh, of a consistent thickness. They also have their own properties such as volume, area, and height. As such, they can be scheduled independently of their original elements. While it is likely that designers will use parts to customize architectural elements, we are going to discuss only the workflow intended for the builder. Excuse me. To get started with the basic workflow for creating and dividing parts, follow these steps. Open the C20 Part Start RVT or its metric equivalent, which you download from the book's webpage. Activate the default view if it isn't already open. Notice that each uh, of the wall, floor, ceiling, and roof elements in the sample model is composed of one object. A section box has been activated in this view that is exposing the layers within each element. If you look at the uh, properties palette of the view, you'll see underneath the uh, extents uh, category, you'll see the section box is checked. It wasn't when you open it. Now, if it isn't already open, you'll see the default view. Now, the, uh, that section box has been activated in this view that is exposing the layers within each element. And as you can see, these are the beginning parts of, the, uh, of this model. Select the floor at level 2. On the Create panel in the contextual tab derivative, excuse me, click the Create Parts button. So, on the Create panel in the contextual tab of the ribbon, within the context of selecting the second floor, and notice the gypsum wallboard compound ceiling, just to let you know. Uh, select within the context of selecting the floor on the create panel, which opens up, which isn't there. And you can get confused because I've been confused on this. The, when you create a new family and you're working within the family interface, the architecture, the first tab to your left is create. But when you are in the RVT project file, create is within the it's a, it's a contextual tab that only is available when you select a particular entity or element, just so that you don't get tripped up the way I did when I was early on, when I was a younger man. All right, so now, let's uh, select that. And sure, within the context of it, you'll see that on the Create panel, we have some tools here. And again, Create Group, 
uh, create assembly, create parts, and uh, create similar. So let's just hover over this tooltip for a second and take a peek. Creates parts from the layers or subcomponents of a selected element. Parts are automatically updated to reflect any changes to the element from which they are derived. Modifying a part has no effect on the original element. Parts can be divided into small parts using the divided parts tool, B-listers. <laughs> just kidding. Everyone has a part to play. Everyone has a part to play in this. Especially if you plan on staying in this town. <laughs> you know, if you're living in this peninsula, on this peninsula, it's only three miles. You can't shit in this town without someone knowing what color it is. Anyway, that's for a bin manager to know. When you have some background screen me. I'll let you know. <laughs> ahead of time what you're going to get it's easier that way it's easier that way right? see I'll, so, I'll save you the money I'll just let you know what you're going to get <laughs> okay uh, not being facetious <laughs> I've been through the ringer man I've been through the ringer okay so we selected it we uh, within the context of it uh, create, uh, touch the uh, create parts button Okay, now, let's just flip back and forth for a second. You see there's a slight difference. There is a slight difference. We zoom in. Oops, if we I unzoom, it ordinarily doesn't happen. Well, in this particular context, it does. In this view, it goes back to your view. It usually doesn't. It just undoes the command. All right, well, in any event, and you can see there's a little topping slab added to that. Because when I saw a topping slab, yeah, I'm, I'm positive I saw a topping slab. And you can fit conduit in it, just to let you know. But conduit can go in a topping slab. Now, I can show you my design for the Four World Trade Center site. Good stuff. Good stuff. Quality craftsmanship. Despite Michelle <laughs> and Marie, those two. Anyway couple of chicks I met along the way. Instrumental in my development. If they're uh, within earshot, uh, <laughs> I say hello, I'm still here. You didn't, you didn't put me in my grave yet. All right, those two, oh my Lord. Anyway, I guess his son still wants to work for the Department of Defense, huh? He probably, he's probably better off. <laughs> I'm not even gonna talk about that guy. With the donuts. Anyway, we need more parts. Okay, so notice that the object has been visually replaced in the current view by the parts representing each layer of the floor assembly. Now, that doesn't appear on the surface as being very granular, but trust me, it gets much more detail. Okay, so, yeah, uh, it is still in the project model, but and, and it has not been deleted, because uh, it says to notice that the original object has been visually replaced in the current view by the parts representing each layer of the floor assembly. It is still in the project model, it has not been deleted. There is a new view property in the properties palette named Parts Visibility, whose default view is Show Parts. A new view property in the properties palette named Parts Visibility, whose default view is the default value is shown parts, right? If we look here in the, the property palette of the view, there is a new video button that says show parts, parts visibility on the graphics, show parts, show both, show original, show parts. In the project browser, right click to default view view and choose duplicate view and then duplicate rename the copy of the view original model. So if we were to go to right mouse click here, duplicate view, and we'll get into this later, duplicate with detail, but duplicate view, and change it to original model, change the name to original model, rename, original model, like me. Uh, I want to get back to the 
highly functioning, productive mic. That's the, uh, the mic that the disingenuous choice <laughs> persecuted. I'm persecuted. Anyway, I asked for this line of reasoning. I asked to go on to this course. I took this path in life, and, and give what you ask for, you get it. It's not easy. It's not easy, man. It's not easy trying to go back and forth between the two. So that's why diplomacy plays such a huge part in this. I find, I think, my forte is more along the diplomatic uh, avenues, or you'll get polarized. Now, in any event, so now we have a duplicated view. Now, let's just make sure that we have the view representative of the original view here. This is the original view, and this is show parts. Now, activate the view named original model from the properties palette, find the parts visibility parameter, change it to show original, which I just did. In the project browser, rename the 3D view to parts model. data model? Anyway, this is uh, dated uh, Saturday, 7-11, 2020. Anyway, or aspiring models. Has anyone ever dated an aspiring model? Well, this can be post-dated as well. All right, so uh, activate the parts model view and repeat the process of creating parts for the wall, the ceilings, and the roof in the sample model. Create, uh, simply select each of these elements and choose the parts tool from the context menu. Okay, well, let's do exactly as the text tells us to do. What we have, we have this floor here. We have both ceilings. So that's going to be uh, two views, four views, six views, eight views, ten views. Right? Is that, uh, am I, am I, is, it, is my math correct? In the previous exercise, you created an alternative way to view your model that begins to explore constructability. Without additional modification, you can start to interact with these individual components by examining their properties or even hiding them or overriding their graphic display. Well, I'm going to leave you here. I have some work to do. This is one of those exercises that may be compounded. However, I am all about expedition. So let's take a look and see parts finished and see if indeed it will help us skip uh, clip out of that particular exercise because that's a lot of work and uh, should be, uh, you know, the, I, I haven't, I haven't seen a few checks. I'm still waiting for some other checks. Let's see here. Uh, original model, let's see here, and parts model. Okay, so yeah, it was going to be all in one, so it's not ten, <laughs> but it is in essence ten. It's just that they kept it all in um, under lumped into two different uh, 3D views. So that would have saved us a lot of time. God forbid if the, the uh, communication uh, was issued to me uh, by an individual to do a particular exercise, which I have had in the past, and it was an exercise in futility that that would have been. So when you structure uh, your deliverables and your, uh, you, when you structure your deliverables to an individual, you really should really taking consideration how much effort is going to go into uh, that particular exercise. Because, again, labor costs money. Labor costs money. Right? Especially if it takes long. The longer it takes, the more money it's going to cost. I, it, I know that's such an enlightened thing to say. I, I'm sure that's so... Uh, so uh, uh, so I'm sure that's just something you didn't know. I'm sure uh, I'm preaching to the choir again, but uh, if you can somehow find a way to to be able to grasp this and implement it in the field at the age of 50, you're going to be better off for it. If you can find the time or you just it may be too late for you. It may be too late. I've been s trying to help you for years. For years. And 
at some point, uh, you know, I, I may just, unfortunately, you may just be left in the dust. Uh, and there's nothing I can do. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Or you can't make them stop drinking.